my title today is The Call. That's my title, The Call and The Preparation. Amen. I've been really, really busy this morning. We told our GOD students to get here at 7.30 in the morning. The reason for that, I wanted to see how they look in the mornings. I said, ladies, put your makeup on. I don't want you to look all scary and stuff like that. I mean, some of you don't need it, but some of you... Um, and I told them... <laughs> and, I and I said that we need to be persistent. Like, if you're not a morning person, we can tell by your facial expressions and stuff. And we teach, we teach that, even how to smile. Uh, look, look to your neighbor, see if they're smiling. Anybody smiling? Anybody not smiling? Come on, tell your neighbor, smile. Tickle them. Tickle, tickle, tickle. Uh, <laughs> Don't tickle the wrong one, man. We got some jealous wives in this house. Amen. They'll be tickling. Tickle the one that belongs to you. Amen. <laughs> the Kodak moment. Yeah, you got to smile. Even if you have one tooth, if you have no tooth, just smile. Every time you smile, you give the devil a black eye in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Speaking about smiling, I preached a message uh, titled Revenge on Wednesday. If you were not here Wednesday, I use the scripture out of the book of Matthew chapter 5 and it begins like in 38 and 42 and it talks about uh, that you have heard an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth but I tell you the Lord says not to resist an evil person but whoever slaps you on the right cheek turn the other one to him also. This is something that is not easy to do when someone offends you. What do you do? And a lot of men, a lot of women, we teach these to our GOD, but not all of you have been to our classes. So when you sit here and you haven't been to a class, you're sitting here because we're building a structure that is strong. We're building a, 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 a team that is not weak, that you have to have thick skin when you come to the Lord. Amen. Because if you don't have thick skin and when things come against you, you you'll run and you'll never finish what you started. So we, we talked about this, and then I, the reason I talked about it and I preached about it, because I actually went through it. And I was going to preach about that already, but I didn't realize that I was going to go through it. So last weekend, I didn't say this in front of my mom, because I know my mom, she, you know, she probably get upset, but go to my class, mom, if you get upset. But last week, we went to the coast, and there was a, 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 a house that we rented, and we, I ended up parking on level number two. And if you weren't, if you were here Wednesday, just bear with me. And I parked in level and, and underneath carport number two. And, but there was a lot of towels right there by the doors and there was bikes. And so I said, man, somebody's already here. So we called and the lady's like, oh, I'm so sorry. You're in parking number eight. By that time, this guy <laughs> parked right behind me and blocked me in. And he gets off and he says, what are you doing here, man? This, this is my house. I said, oh, uh. I'm sorry, I parked here because, yeah, you parked here and you dropped your beep, 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 pick up your beep, beep, beep. He was cussing at me like that. So I picked up my beep, 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 and I put it back in the <laughs> uh, And then he went upstairs. He ran upstairs, and, uh, and then I got in my truck, and I was going to reverse it. I said, man, this guy's blocking me. I said, okay. So he just comes downstairs, and he gets in his truck, and as I'm backing off, I guess I'm getting real close to the pole. So he comes, and he bangs on my truck door. And he goes, hey, watch it. This is my house. And I say, hey, I'm, I'm just, well, listen, the reason I'm here, sh 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 shut up. I don't want to hear what you have to say. I go, no, the reason I'm parking, I sh 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 don't say another word. Just move your beep beep truck. Look at your neighbor and say, what would you do? Now, wait for, wait for a response. I want to hear the responses here. <laughs> oh, my God, I'm glad you're at church. You came to the right place at the right time. <laughs> and some of you are like, mm, mm. And, and the thing is, I, I, I said nothing at all. I just moved the truck and I went to park in parking number eight. And I went upstairs. I didn't tell my wife. I didn't tell nobody. I just went upstairs. Because, you know, it kind of bothered me, but I didn't say nothing. I was like, mm. And I went to the mirror, to the bathroom. And I was talking to the mirror like, what, what? Say it again, say it again. I dare you to say it again. No, you pick it up. You pick it. <laughs> you know how sometimes you think like, man, I should have said this. I, 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 man, one more word, one more word. And I just felt like when he went, in, in the mirror, I just, in my mind, I grabbed his finger and I twisted, bam, broke it. 
like I was like Steven Seagal, like what? Then I did a split, ha, and I bounced up and down. I was like, what? <laughs> I did all that in here, not out there. <laughs> and and then so I come out and I tell my wife what happened, and I tell Cheryl and and, and Harold were with me, and they weren't in the same spirit. If you don't know, Cheryl's like a Filipina kind of girl. She took out these chopsticks from up here. I don't know. Do y'all wear chopsticks? Well, that's not the real. She took out. Where are they, Pastor? I'll tell them. I go, Cheryl, come down. And Harold's like, I'm from the San Juan home. Saying, where's he at? Where's he at? My wife comes out. What happened? I told her, go, you going to let him punk you out like that? Are you going to go out like that? And I was like, I said, calm down, guys. I had to get like a lot of oil and anoint all of them. And just, <laughs> I said, listen, yeah, yeah, stop it. Stop it. We got to be Christ-like. Especially you, you're my wife. And I said, I know, but nobody messes with my man. <laughs> Any women like that, you don't mess with my children and you don't mess with my man. <laughs> All right, praise God, amen. So, <laughs> and, and, and it's crazy because when we read on, on, in Matthew, the Beatitudes about Jesus when he goes to the mountain and he gives this, he gives this lesson to all his listeners and he tells them to 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 when when they slap you one cheek to turn it around that, that means like uh, not literally like a slap but when you're really really insulted when someone insults you just to turn around and don't say a word and it says here an eye for an eye a tooth for a tooth but I tell you not to resist an evil person like that not the devil but the person that did it to you use it as an opportunity or just pray for them or just say all right they don't know what they're doing and it's hard to do that guys and we teach that in our GOD, how to bite your tongue. We gave, we gave empty shells of bullet shells a long time ago. I, I preached a message, bite the bullets. Because sometimes we want to open up our mouth and say things. And I say that sometimes, not sometimes, we win more battles by just keeping our mouth shut. We win more battles by not saying a word. Amen. Men and women, if you have a woman that doesn't shut up, or you have a man that just doesn't shut up, one of y'all have to shut up. And if you're one of those that you walk away because you're trying to shut up, but you have one of those west side chicks that comes in, follows you, and knocks on the door, what? Open the door, what? You don't love me or what? And, and if you have one of those women, man, call your father-in-law, call somebody, call on Jesus. You, they, they need help. But that's, that's the ones that are laughing is because she's sitting right next to you. Don't look. Don't look. All right? But so Jesus says, hey, listen, if... if if someone compels you to go one mile, go another mile. And I always teach about that. Going the one mile is like, hey, listen, love those that love you. The second mile is like, love those that hate you. Do good, do good to those that do good to you. Okay, I'll do that. But then the second mile that God is telling us to go is to do good to those that are not doing good to you, those that persecute you, those that talk about you, those that, that you lend and they don't even pay you back. I want you to still be good to them. And that's the hard part right there. Amen. That's the hard thing to do. And then it goes on to say, love your enemies. How in the world are you going to love your enemies? You see, we're building the structure to make it a strong foundation. I'm talking to men and women of God. Say, man, I'm a woman of God. I'm a man of God. Okay, it's good to have fun. It's good to laugh the way we're doing it. But man, to be Christ-like is not easy. And when you come to a church that keeps it real, but it's all about love, then, then you're at the right place because God says, love your enemies. And it's so difficult to love your enemies. And it says to love those who hate you. And how are you going to love those that hate you? And bless those who curse you. Pray for those who spitefully use you. Hallelujah. And if you don't know, we, you know, we have been working on these things. And, and it's, it's hard to, to bless those that use you. Anybody here ever been used before? Anybody here been talked about? Amen. And, and the thing is, is and what do you do in those situations? And, we, and can you imagine this whole body of Christ? Because the head is Jesus. Amen. But can you imagine the whole body of Christ being that strong that the devil's like, man, I come with an uppercut here and I come with a right and I come with a jab and all these things and, 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 and they're still praising God and they're still loving God. And, I sh and I, they should have fell a long time ago, but they're still standing in the name of Jesus. And, 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 it's, and it's cool to be able to understand like, man, I'm stronger than what I was when I first started my walk with Christ. Is anyone here stronger now than when you were when you first started walking with God? Amen. And that's, that's what it's all about, that people can see the difference in you when you were before to where you're at now. 
Because God has taken you out of the old man and he made you a new man. Hallelujah. You're no longer how you used to be. Amen. And I'm here to say that the body of Christ, the church, um, is getting prepared for something amazing. This church is, uh, um, is I'm, I'm, I'm wrote it down here. I said this church uh, is, is, God is preparing this church for the biggest breakthrough that we ever, ex I'm going to say it again, the biggest breakthrough that we have ever experienced before. I feel like the doors are trembling in the name of Jesus. And I feel like there's a, I feel like, the, like, like, like God's hand is on the window and he's about to fully open it up in the name of Jesus and pour out a blessing that you won't be able to contain. I don't know who's going to receive this. Some of you that have been saying, you know what, Pastor? I've been talked like that. I've been let down like that. I've been cursed at. I've been lied on. But I'm still here. And if God says for me to keep my mouth shut because he's about to open up the windows of heaven, then I'll keep my mouth shut and I'll let God be God because the battle's not mine. The battle belongs to God. And bring it on, Father God. Pour down your blessings. And devil, I thank you for doing all what you got to do. But I'm still here. Hallelujah. I'm still standing. And I'll still praise his holy name because God has a plan for me. Praise the name. Oh, come on. God has a plan for me and it's not to harm me but to prosper me in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And I'm here to tell you there is a breakthrough that is on its way. And, 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 and we've experienced breakthroughs. We've experienced all kinds of greatness in this church. We've experienced things that uh, a, a lot of people have never experienced but it comes with a price. My daughter just called me today. Did she, she told you the story? My daughter called me today, and Mariah, she goes, Dad, I need to tell you a story. I go, what is it? He goes, I saw Tori. Those of you that are here for the first time, I lost my daughter of ni uh, at 19 years old in a tragic car accident while I was preaching the gospel. I preached the gospel on, on a Sunday, talking about the danger of staying behind. And then that Tuesday, I lost my daughter. And it's like the devil tapping me on my shoulder. I said, man, what are you going to do now? Are you going to stay behind? Are you going to still praise your God? Because, you know, it's like your daughter is gone. But I always say nothing happens without passing through the hand of God. Man, God, God had a plan. It might not make sense. It might hurt me a lot. But the thing is, God is still large and he's still in charge. Amen. That's my God. And when you can still stand in the midst of the storms and stand in the midst of chaos, that sets you apart from others. Amen. Some people can't handle losing a loved one. That is tough. It is the toughest thing. You vow that man will never be the same after all the children that were lost there and the wives that were lost and the husband that lost. All these things, tragedy comes and it hits you. But when you're not ready and you're not prepared and you're not standing on solid ground, your foundation being Jesus, you will fall. You will go back. And that's a danger of staying behind. And you go back to drugs and to anger and to other things. And then instead of running to Jesus, you run from Jesus. Amen. The thing is, we, we, wanna, we want you to, to learn and we want to teach how to be strong and be unmovable and unshakable in the midst of it all. So my daughter called me this morning <clears throat> and she tells me, Dad, I had an amazing dream. And she says, I, I, I don't know what she, remember the whole story that she was at somewhere. And she said that she saw Tori, which is my daughter Tori. And she said, I, I just ran to her dad and I hugged her and I just embraced her. And she was talking to me, Dad. She was telling me, she was telling me that she's been there with me all along. And my daughter's telling me this right now, right before I came. She was telling me this. And I was crying and crying in the bathroom because uh, I was just listening to her. And Mariah was telling her, why did you leave for? Why did you leave? Why did you leave us? And she said, I was just in so much pain. And I'm always thinking about like that tragic car accident where three people got killed in that car accident that my daughter was in. Three people, little, little kids, little children. And my daughter, I go, <clears throat> was she in pain? I wish I would have been there. Was she crying out? So when she told me that. I had to go. I couldn't take the pain, and I had to go. But I, I, I'm, I've been there. I've been through it all. Uh, I've been through wherever you're at. Tell dad that I've been there. He goes, I heard that you got a job. I heard you got married, and you better. And she started talking like, like Tori, and I was like, wow, just to have a dream like that, that you can be able, like, to feel or see what she's wearing and just embrace. I mean, it might sound crazy, but to me, just to hear those words, like, man, God, you're so faithful. You're so awesome because you, in the midst of it all, through graduation, you remind me how to stay strong through it all amen that's just, that's just a reminder that God is with us God is the only one that can give us that strength the only way we're going to be able to survive and be able to live 
up to what God called us to live is through holding on to the hand of Jesus. If you don't hold on to the hand of Jesus, man, you will not make it. If there's anyone here that is depressed or you're sad, you have anger problems, you're an abusive husband, or you're going through some abuse with your husband, or you have a lost child, or you're dealing with drugs or alcohol or something with suicide thoughts or depression or schizophrenic or whatever, bipolar, things that maybe people have labeled you and told you different things, I'm here to tell you that we serve a God of miracles. Hallelujah. We serve a God of breakthroughs. So when I say that we're so close to experience the biggest breakthrough has, that last chapter has ever, ever experienced, you got to brace yourself in the name of Jesus. You got to prepare yourself for the call because the thing is when God calls you, he will sustain you and he will bless you when you hold on tight to the hand of Jesus. Amen. So I'm, I'm, I'm here to just talk to you about the, the call and the preparation. So are you ready to be blessed? Amen. Praise God. I want you to join me in... in in the book of Matthew chapter 4, it's just a real um, real short thing I want to uh, talk about real quick. Matthew chapter 4, and uh, let me see where we're going. Starting in verse 18, I believe. Let me see, 18. Yep, 18, and I'm going to go to verse 25, and then I'll, I'll start with my message. Amen. You can stand for the word of God. It'll be, it'll be a blessing. Hallelujah. The book of Matthew chapter 18 verse, I mean chapter 4, I'm sorry, verse 18. I'm reading out of the New King James. The Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John is in, in the New Testament. When you're there, please say amen. The word of God says, and Jesus walking by the Sea of Galilee saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea. For they were fishermen. Hallelujah. They immediately left their nets and followed him. Hold on, let me say that again. They immediately left their nets and followed him. All right, let's go on. Verse 21. Going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, in the boat with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets. And he called them, and immediately they left their boat and their father and followed him. Remember, their boat and their father follow him. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in the synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all kinds of sickness and all kinds of diseases among the people. Then his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought to him all sick people who were afflicted with various diseases and torments, and those who were demon-possessed, epileptics and paralytic, and he healed them. Great multitudes followed him from Galilee and from Decapolis, Jerusalem, Judea, and beyond the Jordan. And Father, I pray that you anoint my lips, Lord. Let it be you speaking through me, Father. And I ask you these things in Jesus' name. And everyone say, amen, amen. You may have a seat. Hallelujah. Well, today, as you heard, we are going to graduate about 27 students, I believe. Um, and uh, yeah, now let's give it up for them. Praise God. And these, these students, we, uh, some of them, like they said, have, are in GLD3. That's like a nine-month course. They, they, they continue to keep on going and keep on going. And we're talking about the call. When God saves you, when he comes to your rescue and he says, follow me. When he says, follow me, that means follow him. Amen. That means that you leave everything behind. And it's not easy to leave everything behind. But today we're graduating some students and I'm proud of them. These followers of God are, are to be leaders and they ought to be men and women to live at a higher level. They are to be, uh, to stand out. Uh, and the thing is, is they're, they're, if they're not there yet, they're getting there little by little. We got some raw people, man. Oh, my goodness. <clears throat> when we first started, it reminds me of Jesus. When we first started the class, the first GOD1, I said, we're going to talk about your weakness, okay? So I want you to think about your weakness, okay? We're going to talk about your weakness. What is your weakness? Do you smoke? Do you drink? Do you cuss? Are you angry? And so forth. Some people said yes to all of them. I said, oh, my God, I have a long way to go. And, and, <laughs> and then you ask yourself, what is my weakness? Uh, I say, man, well, uh, you know, there's nothing wrong with me. Okay, y y your weakness is uh, denial, right? And the, we all have a weakness. And if it is like we, we say this pleasure says I'm a servant of God and I'm, I'm prepared to give my life in his defense. So we teach him how to be on time. 
So that's your weakness that I can never be on time. We work on people getting there on time. Because we say, if you say, I'm a servant of God, I'm prepared to give my life in this defense. How are you going to give your life if you can't even give your time, right? So we're looking for men and women that can be able to give their life to Jesus. But that means that you give your time to God. I'm not talking about people that walk in all late. I'm not talking about people that just, you know, I'm talking about men and women of God that God wants to prepare you for this breakthrough. And sometimes you get here so late. I'm not talking about just here, anywhere, so late that you miss your blessing. You got to be the first one there and the last one out. Amen. That's a true leader right there. You got to be able to go further than others will ever even go. Those are the things that we teach. And I'm talking about this because we have graduation here today. And if you don't know, we, we have been working on the structure for the body of Christ to just make it stronger and stronger. And I, I want to prepare you for the blessing that is on its way to your life. Amen. Because it doesn't just bless you. It bless your family, your children, and your children to come. And you got to get excited for that because God wants to bless every single one of you. Okay. Um, so I wrote this down. Between the seed of leadership, okay, the, the, the seed. Everybody received a seed at one time. If, you, if you've been coming to the church, I, I, I give everybody a seed. I always like to give seeds, right? This is a seed. So between the seed of leadership planted in the early stages at GLD1 and the fruit of leadership that comes with maturity, like you get to GLD2, GLD3, or you that come to church, you first started, like you're raw, like you still cuss, you drink, you smoke, but you love Jesus. Sounds like me when I first started. And, 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 and it's, it's, it's good because you're so hungry for God. But you come more and more and you're wise and you say, man, talk to me, God. Not this person right here, but talk to me, God, through this person. I want to hear what you have to say to me. So sometimes you hear a word that it feels like I'm talking about you. Or you hear a word that you tell your neighbor that you tell him about me because how does he know? But it's just Jesus knows everything about you. That's why he woke you up and he orders the steps of a good man and he brings you into this house to hear not this voice but to hear his voice. And when you hear his voice, you, you, you begin to grow and you begin to mature. So the seed is what's coming forth right now. That seed either is going to fall on fertile ground. In other words, you're listening and you really want to receive what God has in store for you. Or that seed is going to fall on this shallow ground where it feels good for a moment. But as soon as you leave, the birds come and they take your seed and say, give me that. Or the devil knows you better that he'll come and say, okay, was that a good praise and worship? Yeah, okay, now come over here. I got a nice cold one here in the refrigerator. I got a little weed here. Here's your friends. And all of a sudden you lose it. But those men and women of God that came here for, for, for a true word from God, that hold on to the word and said, devil, get behind me, hallelujah. I'm going to be blessed and I'm not leaving here without my blessing. Those are the men and women that I'm talking to here t today. That you will be receptive and you'll be ready to receive what God has in store for you. So between the seed of leadership planted in the early stages, maybe some of you here for the first time. And maybe you don't know Jesus there's a lot of people that just don't know how to walk with Christ or what is it to be saved and so forth. So I'm going to read it again. Between the seed of leadership planted in the early stages and the fruit of leadership that comes with maturity, every leader goes through two major phases. And that's the call and the preparation. Amen. The call and the preparation. During the preparation season, all leaders get tested to live at a higher level than others. Anyone here been tested? Amen. That you get tested. We were testing some of the, uh, some of the students earlier uh, on the book of Nehemiah. Nehemiah was an individual that decided to build what was ruined. And if you're here and say, man, I decided to build what is ruined. My marriage, my finances, my children, my health. I want to I start working and building on that. And that's good. 
But as you're building, like Nehemiah, once they heard that he began to build and he was really serious. I'm not talking about people that just come whenever you want to come. I'm talking about people that said, man, I'll be like the followers of Jesus and I'll leave what I got to leave to follow my God. And if they want to follow me, they got to follow the God that I follow because I'm not here for them or for them. I'm here for Jesus and myself. Hallelujah. I want to go ahead and just see what the Lord has in store for me. Some of you, like the woman with the issue of blood, have tried it all. But I guarantee you, when you try Jesus, that's all you need. Because he's the way, the truth, and the life. Hallelujah. So if you're here and you tried it all, you've gone to Papa John's. You've gone and called to read your cards. You sat down at the Chinese restaurant and you get upset because you should have married a dragon, but you married a dog. Whatever. All those horoscopes and all these things. That's all, all that stuff is out there. But when, if you tried all that and you're still not where you should be, I'm here to tell you, you came to the right place. Hallelujah. Because Jesus is in this house and God is a faithful God. A God that will not leave you or forsake you. A God that said, man, I knew you before you were even in your mother's womb. And I have have a plan for you that's the one we should be looking up to is Jesus and following him so when we follow Jesus don't go and say read my palm oh I see an M I think everybody has an M oh he must be with a girl named Mariah <laughs> rub an egg kill the chicken put the cup underneath it oh son of Anita there you go it's coming it's coming <laughs> That doesn't work. My mom used to put uh, the little string with the little red eye of the, what do you call it? Of the venal, the deer. Some of you know that. And all my mom's friends, they used to, the grandma, put a little string. Those of you that don't understand what venal is, it's the deer. And when you're really cute, they will put a red string here with a little eye of the, uh, the deer right here. And then... Because when people see you, they want to touch you. Oh, let me touch you. So they won't get ojo, right? So they won't get sick. And they rub you and stuff. And then when you're sick, oh, they probably gave you ojo. So they rub an egg on your stomach. And right now the prices are high, man. You can't really, you know, pretend the egg's right there. Pretend the egg's right there. Not there. <laughs> but my mom, said, my mom didn't do what her friends did because I was like really super cute. My mom would hang the whole deer. <laughs> I had the whole deer. I was dragging the whole deer. Eight pointer. Oh. Anybody been that cute? Amen. Praise God. Thank God for the cuteness. My mom did all that. I don't know if she did it because we couldn't afford eggs or what, but she, she, did, she did it. Come on, let's give it up for the Lord here today. Amen. <laughs> And so the two major phases or phases is the call and the preparation. And during the preparation season, leaders really, really begin to get tested. Amen. Tested to the point where the Sambalit and the Tobias, these are individuals, if you read the book of Nehemiah, these are individuals that were actually hired. They were hired to go and discourage Nehemiah to stop building what he started. And some of you that are here today, you're going to have some, some ballads and Tobias that are going to discourage you saying, that's not your religion and you weren't brought up that way and what are you doing at that church and you shouldn't be there or, 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 or you think you're all holy now and come on, don't forget about your friends or don't forget where you came from. And you hear all these things that are coming and it'll come from the one you most, the one that loves you the most as well. Some, some come from your family, your friends and it'll, it'll, it'll discourage you and you come down and then you'll stop coming and you stop building on your marriage or your children and you say man I forget this it's never going to work and this is where the testing comes in Nehemiah he never came down from from what he was doing he stayed where he was supposed to be he will say man why should I come down to you and stop doing what doing the, the work of my father I'm too busy up here I can't go down there hallelujah there's some of you that you are still down there with a bunch of chickens looking down you got to rise up in the name of Jesus and be that eagle mounted up high hallelujah and when they call you down there say brother I love you but if you want to know where I'm at I'm at 404 Brady Boulevard praising the name of Jesus come up here with me and let's praise the name of Jesus together let's do what God called us to do one of those things that we have to understand we got to do these things and really 
really follow God and trust God in everything that we do. Amen. So the, the, there's no, no, one, no one responded the way or better than Jesus did. He's the one that you should follow. That's the greatest leader that ever lived. Amen. Jesus called his people to live at a higher, higher level than the rest of, his, uh, rest of the world. His, his call brings many other tests along the way for, uh, to make you stronger. Tests make you stronger. There's a pastor that said, all the hell that I went through, because when you go through more hell, the, the anointing comes upon you. Because everybody wants the anointing, but they don't want to go through the hell. They want to get to the promised land, but they don't want to go through the wilderness. Amen. They don't want to go through, 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 the, uh, through the ditches or through the prisons and through all these things. They want to just go straight to the promised land. And it doesn't work that way. Like, they can't take what you have because you work so hard for it. Hallelujah. They, they, they want your anointing. And the, the pastor was talking about this and my wife's like, listen to this. And it's so true because the pastor was saying, people want my anointing. So I tell them, are you willing to get your lights turned off? And if you're willing to get your cars repossessed? And are you willing to get your water turned off? Are you willing to go without food? Are you willing to lose a daughter? Are you willing to go through all this hell? And then where are you going? I thought you wanted the anointing. No, come back over here. No, we just want the anointing. No, you got to go through some hell and high waters in order for you to receive the anointing of God. Is there anyone here that's been through some hell and high waters? Hallelujah. You should get up on your feet and praise the name of Jesus because the anointing, hallelujah, is about to fall fresh upon you and God's about to bless you like never before because you're still standing. Is anyone here should not be here, but you're still here? Hallelujah. Anyone here should have been six feet under, but you're alive right now? Anybody should have been locked up, but you're free right now in the name of Jesus? Is there anyone here that used to be hooked on drugs, but now you're hooked on Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, praise the name of Jesus. Come on, Josh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have to understand where God took us out of. When he says, follow me, we followed him. What did you expect? Not to go through anything? No. All hell's going to break loose. You become the biggest target of the devil. He wants to take you out. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And I always say that before he can kill and destroy, he has to steal. Steal your joy. Steal your peace. Steal your dream. And if he steals that, then you begin to go from smiling to frowning. And now you can't even smile. You can't move on. Now you're sad. Now you're depressed. You don't want to keep on going. But I'm here to tell you, man, when you stand strong in the midst of it all, it shows what you're built out of. I said, man, that person right there, I know he's going through some things in his marriage, but I see him get up every Sunday morning with the Bible in his hand. How do they keep on moving? Hallelujah. Oh, I know that person. I know that they go to church, but how do are they, 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 they're, they, I see them walking every Sunday and Wednesday and Tuesday. I know their sons and daughters, they're hooked on drugs, but they're still going high. I know that person, they told them they got cancer, but how does she still stand? Hallelujah. It's because of Jesus. Hallelujah. It's because of King of Kings. It's because of Lord of Lords. And it's because his strength. Hallelujah. That keeps us going. That keeps us standing. Because without him, we can't stand. Without him, we can't move. Without him, we can't fight. But with him, we can do all things hallelujah he's the one that strengthens us he's the one that gives us the victory because of the cross hallelujah we can stand and shout his holy name is jesus hallelujah come on praise his holy name praise the name of jesus every single person in this house when god called you see some people can't handle this message some people can't handle it's too loud Maybe I'm shouting too much, but I just can't help myself. Maybe you came here and you're not used to all this noise. Maybe you came here and you're not used to all the people lifting up their hands. I've heard people tell me before, when I first started, I couldn't raise my hand. Like, you're looking around like, who's watching me? I always say that the biggest weapon you can use against the enemy is when you lift up your hands. Because that's a sign of surrender. Hallelujah. I don't care what you say. And I don't care what you say. I mean, I love you, but you're not the one that woke me up. Hallelujah. It's Jesus that woke me up. And I lift up my hands and I praise his name. And I lift up my hands and I say, thank 
thank you, Jesus, because if it hadn't been for you, I wouldn't be where I'm at right now. Come on, somebody, if it hadn't been for him, you wouldn't be where you're at right now. So praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody get excited. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. For he is good and his mercy endures forever. Hallelujah. Praise the name of God. Hallelujah. See, the devil doesn't want you to lift up your hands. He wants you to keep your hands down. He wants you to keep your hands behind your back, locked up in bondage, a slave to sin, a slave to those things. I said, man, I can't quit. I want to do good, but I can't do good. I love God, but I still got this addiction. I love God, but I'm still cheating. <clears throat> I love God, and it's good when I'm here, but when I go home, it's so difficult because you don't know what I got when I, when I get home, Pastor. You don't know how it is when I'm driving home. It's a lonely road. It's a lonely time. And I always say that a leader sometimes has to walk alone because the person next to you, they wouldn't even understand. Sometimes you got to go outside by yourself and just call and cry on Jesus. Cry out to God. Don't call your friends. Don't call your compadres and your comadres. Don't call a psychic. Call on Jesus. Hallelujah. There is power in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody say there's power in the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody say Jesus. Hallelujah. It's so cool, man, when you call on the name of Jesus. You know how many times I call on the name of Jesus all the time? I wake up, some of you know this. I wake up at 3 or 4 in the morning. Whenever I wake up to the bathroom, I have my eyes closed, and I'm just saying, Lord, help me. Lord, forgive me. Jesus, just give me strength. That's just going to the bathroom. I'm talking to him because I need him every step of my life. I need him every second of my life. When I wake up, the word Jesus comes out of my mouth. When I wake up, the word Jesus comes out of my mouth. When I wake up, the word Jesus comes out of my mouth. Nothing but Jesus if what comes out of my mouth. I love to serve God because I appreciate what he did for my life. When people say, man, you're always at church and you're always teaching and you're always spending all your time and you just give everything to everybody, when do you rest? I say, man, I, I do rest. God gives me the rest, believe me. But the thing is, is that I, I, I just love God so much. I wish there was more people that have that love and that compassion for others. Because it's not about us anymore. It's about others. Hallelujah. Because God already took me out of the miry pit. He already turned my life around and set my feet on solid ground. He already lit me up. Hallelujah. I got to go and tell somebody what God did for me. Hallelujah. God can do for you. Praise the name of God. Hallelujah. See, we become, we become selfish. We become so selfish. What about me, Father God? And if they tell me something, I'm going to tell them back. And if they do me wrong, I'm going to do them wrong. Because look at what they did to me. I always use this illustration when, when husbands or wives come to me and tell me, Pastor, I try my best. So how many times do you forgive someone? 70 times 7, is that what it says? Like, like, like if they do it all the time, you still got to forgive them. And God said, yeah. And that's not hard to, that's not easy to do. But when, when men and women come to me and say, Pastor, you just don't understand. I tried with her and she just doesn't listen. And I do everything and it just doesn't work. And how much do I have to try with him? And I try praying for him and I do this. And he just like, he just like makes me feel like this small, Pastor. And I tell my friends and I know you said to forgive them. And I forgive them but they still treat me ugly. And they talk about me and they do all these things. And, and I don't understand. I didn't do nothing wrong. Why? I'm trying to be Christ-like. And I just don't know what to do because no matter how hard I try, they don't appreciate me. They don't even say, they said you're going to be there for me, but they're not there for me. I, I, I just don't know. I, I, don't, I don't know why. And then I, I stand right here. And you think about Jesus on the cross where he did nothing wrong. Yet they spit on him, pulled on his hair. They beat him to a point where he was indescribable. There, there, there's no, no, nobody could, nobody can even imagine what he went through. And yet on the cross, he says, forgive them, for they do not know what they're doing. And if I can forgive, then you shall forgive as well. 
That's a true leader right there, man. Oh my goodness, I thank God for my Jesus. That's why I do what I do. Because if it wasn't for that cross, hallelujah, if he would have never laid his life down for me, I would have still been doing cocaine. I would have still been lost. My marriage wouldn't be where it's at. But I thank my God that he died on the cross so I could be free, hallelujah. I thank my God that he went to the cross so I can be happy and rejoice, hallelujah. Come on, somebody praise the name of Jesus, hallelujah. In this verse, Jesus calls the men to leave the profession because they were fishers of men and to follow him for a full-time commitment. Somebody say full-time commitment. We have a lot of part-time Christians, man. And I pray for this church because we have a strong, strong church. We got some attitudes, a lot of attitudes, that came in with an ugly thinking, filthy mouth, broken, hurt, abuse, just down and out. They didn't feel like they can be part of this GOD class. But God, God told them, follow me. Don't worry about what people say. They look at the outside. I look at the inside. Hallelujah. They say you can't do it. I know you can do it. I don't create no junk. I make nothing but the best. Hallelujah. You're a masterpiece. You're more than a conqueror, God says. You are a child of the Most High. When you can, when you can start speaking those words into yourself and look at yourself in the mirror the way I was looking at the mirror and say, what? And when I can look at myself and say, man, proud of you. Because he owe you you wouldn't have kept your mouth shut. But it's no longer you who live, but it's Christ who lives in you. Hallelujah. Oh, oh that was a good word right there. Can anybody say that? It's no longer Christ. I mean, it's no longer me who live, but it's Christ who lives in me. If you can't say that because you're living a life of all kinds of hell, right now, you got the opportunity to say that right now and say, I don't care what you did yesterday. If you open your mouth right now and say, you know what, it's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. The devil's gonna be like, what in the world are you talking about? Devil, today's the day of salvation, hallelujah. Today is the day that the Lord has made and I will rejoice and be glad in it because God woke me up so I can give my life to him, hallelujah. I lift up my hands and I surrender my life to Jesus. And I tell him to come into my life because I'm accepting him as my Lord and personal Savior. Because I know, hallelujah, that he rose again on the third day. And I'm telling him, Jesus, I want my name written on the book of life. And because my name is in the book of life, I am significant to be his child. I'm a child of the Most High. And then you can start speaking those kind of words. And if there's anyone here that has not given your life to Jesus, today is a day that you surrender your life to God. But if you look around and say, man, all these crazy people, they're jumping and praising them. I look like they are crazy, but I want to be crazy too. What do I got to do? You got to give your life to Jesus. Hallelujah. He will give you this joy that you will not even understand. You will go from like being mad to rejoicing in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You will go from being angry to rejoicing in God. Hallelujah. You will go, you will go from wanting to die to wanting to live in the name of Jesus because the Prince of Peace is in this house. Hallelujah. Come on, praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Ah. And just like Jesus calls these men that were fishing, Jesus always calling, calling people when they're busy doing something. Because he says, he knows, he knows you. For example, myself. Did cocaine <clears throat> for many years. And I was up almost every day. I worked. I was able to function. I was a good husband. I was a good father, but I lived a, another life that my father-in-law, mother-in-law, they, they never, they just thought I was happy all the time. 
So man, he's always smiling, always happy, cracking up jokes. Just the way I am now, that's the way I was back in the world. Now, I, you know, I, I do it for Jesus. But God, God, like he says here, God usually calls people as they are busy doing something. And I was busy doing something all the time. And I hardly ever slept because I was up all night or at the clubs or just out and about hustling, making money and stuff. And it's like Jesus comes to the rescue of someone like myself and someone like you. And, and, and it's like, it's like God shows these fishers that were fishing for fish and say, man, if they can do that and they're that good at that, then I'm going to turn them into fishers of men and let them go fish for men. If Jimmy can stay up all night for the devil, then he can stay up all night for me. Hallelujah. If he can work and work and work for the world, then he can work and work for the kingdom of God. That's why God chose me. That's why God chose you. Because you got what it takes. Hallelujah. Isn't that crazy? Wow. If you're in here and you are a Christian woman now, and you just want to just preach the gospel. You're telling people about Jesus. Or a man as well too. He shoots the people that just love to cuss and fight. Anybody here used to be like that? Nobody could look at you because right away. <laughs> what? And now, think about it. No, for real, think about it. Every single person, an alcoholic that was just drunk making a fool of himself and now you see them and they're laughing and enjoying like man it looks like they're drunk yeah but they're drunk in the Holy Ghost hallelujah they're drunk in the spirit now hallelujah they look like a fool that's the one that they used to fall asleep and put makeup on him and stuff and kick me here no <laughs> oh, think about it fighting and cussing and God's like man those are fighters right there and then he goes and he says follow me and he puts you through this, through this GLD, this discipleship class. And he starts building on you, building and working on you, working on you. That's when you start, you start seeing the development of the seed, the, prop, the process, the preparation. Start preparing you. And it's like, the, like the, you're like that clay in the potter's hand. And he starts to mold you and mold you and, and, and make you into that beautiful vase, that, that beautiful masterpiece. And then all of a sudden you get some pride or you feel like you accomplished it all. And look at me. And he'll smash you back down again and start all over the process again. And not everybody is ready for the process. Not, every, not everyone is ready for the preparation because it hurts. And it feels like a sandpaper rubbing you. But it's good because it's rubbing off all those rough edges off of your life. And it's making you into the image of Christ. And that's why God brings you here and he tells you just the way it is. Because the truth will set you free. Hallelujah. We're not here to sugarcoat the word. We're not here to water down the word. We're here to tell you the word of God because it's sharper than any two-edged sword. It is powerful and it can penetrate deep into the outermost. Hallelujah. And it will expose what needs to be exposed in the name of Jesus. That's the power of God. God is so good, man. The call and the preparation, just like many of you that have decided to follow Jesus, many of you have truly left behind a lot of things. These fishers, the men had to leave their nets and the Father behind to come and follow him. There's a scripture in the Bible that says, if you're not willing to carry your cross daily, then you can't be my disciple. And it goes on to say, who wouldn't sit down and count the cost? Like sit down and say, man, do I got what it takes? I mean, I want to follow Jesus, but man, I got my job. I got my this and I got this and this takes too much of my time. And then you put God, say, God, hold on, not right now. I still smoke, I still drink, I still cuss. When I come, Jesus, I want to come full force and be all in. You hear that all the time. I want to be all in. And God said, no, no, right? Just come as you are with all the drugs and all the problems and all the anger. Come in and follow me and let me work in your life and prepare you 
the preparation begins and I'll make you into the masterpiece. So when graduation comes, they're going to look at you. Aren't you the one that came cussing and angry? But look at you now. You're standing here and I'm saying I'm a servant of God and I'm prepared to give my life in his defense. I'm a servant of God. I will cause no one to stumble who may be watching my walk. Hallelujah. I'm a servant of God. And then you say all scriptures are God's bread and it can be used for teaching, rebuking and training and correcting so that the man of God, hallelujah, can be well equipped to do his work. I I am significant because I'm a child of the Most High. Hallelujah. It is by grace that I've been saved and not by works because God is on my side. Compassion. Thank God for compassion. Hallelujah. I'm here to tell you, you're here right now because God has made a way. He prepared you and he's going to continue to prepare you to get to where you need to get to. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. I'm almost done. God called them to become leaders. Every single person here, God has been calling you for a long time. Some of you have been running and running and running and making excuses after excuses after excuses. The Bible says they will know you by your fruits. When you stand strong and say, man, aren't you the one that used to run all the time? Yeah. Aren't you the one that used to always start but you never finished? Yeah. What are you doing here? You say, man, God hasn't given up on me yet. And I'm not going to give up on him either. But you got to make a choice. You really got to make a choice. And you got to say, you know what? Am I going to be a lukewarm Christian? Because if you look at Revelation, man, God loves the church. So, man, I love everything you're doing. But, there's always a but. But, you have this idol. Or you have this. Or you do this. And then it, it goes to the Philadelphia church. They say, man, you're a faithful church. You're one that doesn't compromise. You're not lukewarm. You're not in one day and then out the other day. You're all in. And I'm looking for men and women that are all in. Hallelujah. No matter what comes their way, they still are all in. Consistency. So when this, when God called the disciples, listen, it was only 12 out of millions of people, whatever. 12 people. Solid it took to turn the world upside down. We have 27 something students that are going to graduate tonight. Can you imagine? I was, I brought in Charlie and I, I had brought in Isabel this morning, Miss Deaconess. And I said, these people, they were in the same class like you. They, they sat there in this class. And I told Charlie, come up here, Charlie, and talk about how you started. And Charlie said, man, I started rough and da 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 da. But you know what? Charlie was teachable. I, I was able to sit down and just. You got to be fat. That means faithful, accountable, and teachable. When you can be able to be corrected, when you can be able to be taught, to be able to say, you know what, you're doing it because you love me. Yes, and it makes you stronger and stronger. And then you can go and build somebody else up. Think about it. Do I want another me? And some of you ask yourself that question, do I want another me? Nah, because I'm a procrastinator. I still cuss. I still drink. I still go to the clubs. I'm not fully in. Okay, then we don't need another you. There's a lot of you. But you got to get to yourself to that point to take yourself. I always say a leader has to, you have to, you can't take someone somewhere where you haven't been yourself. You got to master your own appetite. Like if you smoke, right? When you smoke, like me, I used to smoke and drink and everything and still do altar calls and I love God. But when I gave my life to Jesus, I had this conviction. When you have conviction, it's because you really saved, you gave your life to Jesus. If you don't get no conviction, you don't feel bad, then maybe you're not even safe. But when you smoke and you drink and you cuss, and, oh, I'm sorry, that's conviction. That's because that's no longer you. And God reminds you, ah, shh, be quiet. That used to be old, but the old has gone and the new has risen. You're a new creation in Christ. But if you keep on doing it over and over and over and over, that's just you being spoiled. That's you being like a dog going back to his vomit. And God said, I'll vomit that lukewarm out. I want some true men and women of God. I don't want you to be surprised that when you, when I come, that the door shuts and say, man, depart from me. I never knew you. But I did this and I did this. You can't come here because of your works. You, 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 you praise me and you tell me you love me with your lips, but your heart is so far from me. See, it all starts in the heart, guys. You got to allow God to come into your life. 
your heart changes the way you think starts changing when you used to get upset you don't get upset no more when you wanted to quit I said huh I know better now how many times have you quit how many times have you left how many times have you came back when are you going to say enough is enough when are you going to start running from the devil and let the devil run from you huh come on listen I want everybody to lift up your hands please I want you to do me a favor those of you that want to give your life to Jesus I'm talking about if you say pastor today's the day of salvation yes it is I want a relationship with him I want to just stand up and just let everybody know that I want to be saved I want I want I really want my name to be written in the book of life I don't care what my neighbor says I'm standing up devil because I'm standing up because today is the day of salvation I'm talking to the people that want to give your life to Jesus stand up I want to pray for you right now come on all the GOD all the leaders look around man you got a lot of fish right there you got to look around here we go if you really want to give your life to God and you want your name written in the book of life I want you to say this prayer and if you say this prayer your life will never be the same repeat after me say Lord Jesus forgive me for all my sins I know you died on the cross and you died for me I also know that on the third day you rose again and I'm asking you that you come into my life I accept you as my Lord and personal Savior and Jesus I thank you I thank you for not giving up on me give me strength because I can't do this on my own in Jesus name I pray and everyone say amen amen come on let's give it up for the Lord hallelujah